So this paper is a collaboration between uh, myself and uh, Anthony Helmers and Aldo Pilhani at um, UCL. It's called From a User Model for Query Sessions to Session for a Compliance Precision. So um, I want to say Aldo did the work for this paper. Aldo made the slides. Um, I'm just, uh, you know, I had some philosophical discussions and, uh, and I uh, trusted Aldo to, to take them into interesting places. So, uh, so the motivation for this work was um, thinking about session search, um, which was something that I started working on uh, quite a while ago with the, with the, the track, uh, session track. And uh, our motivation for that was that you know, a lot of research in information retrieval or development in information retrieval is about optimizing for a single query. So a user submits a query, you try to get the most relevant results for that query. But in practice, users tend to submit two, three, four queries. They put queries into a session. Um, they may need a session to complete a task with the search engine. They may need the session to find what they actually need or even to learn about what they need so that they can find what they need uh, and so on. So we wanted to go beyond um, single query optimized systems to session-based systems, systems where the, the user is convicted of interacting with the system over the course of the session. But there are not really good evaluation measures for looking at session-based evaluation. There are some that are in the literature, but it turns out that they're pretty hard to apply in general. Um, they kind of work with some very specific circumstances, which we go into in paper, but, um, but they don't work as generally as we'd like them to. So we wanted a more principled evaluation measure for looking at session-based search, for looking at search and sessions, and we want it to be based on a uh, theoretical user model or you know, a like theory-inspired user model that's um, also experimentally validated. And um, you know, well, ultimately, of course, we want to better understand search over sessions and be able to build systems that can optimize search over sessions um, and also produce test collections that people can use to do that. So I'm going to start by presenting the user model. Um, so we're going to present. Uh, so we'll, we'll present it in this um, little emoji. Form. Uh, these emojis that I'm going to for this presentation. So a user has an information need. That's the this emoji. And um, she writes up a query and she submits it to a uh, colorful search engine, a very primary color search engine. And uh, she gets a ranked list of results for that query. And um, you know, then the little eyes emoji, uh, she looks at that first result, and she's going to make a decision based on what she sees with that first result. And basically we're saying that there's three things, three possible things she could do. The, the first thing is she could go ahead to the next result and look at that next result, and that's the eyes emoji going to the second result. The other thing she could do is throw up her hands and shrug, and put in a new query. Say, I didn't see here anything here, but maybe if I put it in a new query, I'll find something. So then that goes, that error goes back to the beginning, and she puts in another query. The third option is she quits. She says, I don't see anything here. I quit. And, uh, and then she abandons the search at that point. So this is kind of the steps written up in, uh, in text form. The user starts a search. She looks at the first document. And then based on the relevance of that document, she either continues to the next document, in which case she goes back to step two, or she reformulates her query, in which case she goes back to step one, or she gives up entirely, in which case she exits the series of steps. And in terms of the flowchart model, it could look something like this. Um, so we're presenting this because we'll be using all these little letters in, uh, in the development of the model. But again, we use start the search, create a system, that query goes, uh, after, after you submit the query queue, you can send in that document, and that's, uh, that's uh, letter E. If the document is relevant, you may extend more. Uh, if the document is not relevant, you may also extend more. But then there may be different, you know, different probabilities on what you take in the actions depending on whether the document is relevant or not. Uh, and then you may, Which is going to the next document to examine that. We have L with a uh, do over it, which is going to uh, query the system in the second query session. And then we have a type L, which is ending the search. 
And then I'll give you one more representation of this model, which is a graphical model of it. And in this graphical model, you have your queries in the session. So there are M queries in the session, so that's what the M represents. With each query, uh, after each query, you can examine um, for that query M, you can examine position N in the ranked list. And then at, uh, at that position, you can either leave the topic, do another search, um, or continue to the next uh, document. But that's the L. That's the L. Okay, so this, this graphical model then feeds into the probabilistic interpretation of the model. So what we want is a joint model that uh, you want a joint distribution that models all three of these variables in this graphical model. And that's our P of Q sub M, uh, E of M and N, and L sub M and N. And uh, we can decompose that joint model into this uh, multiplication in the probability of the query. So the query comes first, so that's why we have the query first. Times the probability of examining a result from that query. Uh, gives so that's the P of E given Q times the probability of doing something with that result, to take one of the three actions based on that result, and that's the P of I. Now, uh, we are going to make an assumption here, which is that we know all the queries in the session. So when we say the P of Q1 equals Q, we know what Q is, and, um, and so that probability is 1. And then P of Q sub M is the nth query in the session, so the second query, third query, and so on. And that probability is a sum of uh, it's a sum of all the positions in the rank list um, where the user looked at that position and did not abandon the query at that point. And then we have the probability of, ex of examining a relevant document, um, which is for the first document for any query, we define that to be one. So we're saying that the user always looks at the very first for each document. And then for each document after that, there's a probability associated with that particular position, um, which is based on the probability of examining previous positions in the ranked list. Okay, so, so this is the user model. And um, just to make this a little more intuitive, the idea here is that as the user goes through the session, they go through each query in the session, they go down the ranked list of the session, it can, it's going to become less and less likely that they see each subsequent position in a ranked list and more likely that they go on to the next query in the session. But then as they go through that session, that, that uh, sequence of queries, it becomes less and less likely that they're going to put in a new query and more and more likely they're going to end up in search. And that's captured by conditioning the probabilities on previous results in the session. So we want to take this, um, this model, this is a model, and we want to turn this into an evaluation measure. And our inspiration for doing that is the RVP measure, um, which was developed by uh, Alistair Moffat and Justin Sobel um, back in the early 2000s. And that's the, that's the diagram on the left here. So the, the RVP measure says the user comes to the search engine with a query, and then after they put that query, they look at the first result, and after they look at the first result, they decide to either abandon the search abandon, or look at the second result. And they continue until, um, you know, basically there's a probabilistic model that says what's the probability of going to the next result, next result, next result, and then quitting out of the search. And, uh, and that's a user model. And to turn that into an evaluation measure, they take this, this D, this is a, you can think of this as a discount of the rank position, or you can also think of it as a probability of the user viewing that rank position and multiply it by the relevance of the document at that rank position, and then summing that up essentially gives you the utility of that uh, rank list for that user. So, our, uh, so that was our inspiration for this metric, which takes the user model I developed on the previous slide, and you know, it's, so it's essentially a bigger model. There are more decisions that can be made. You can go from query to query, but essentially the, the, the model is essentially the same. You have the relevance judgment of the position uh, the document acquisition N in query M, relevant to the query, query M. And you're summing that up over discounts, which are now defined in terms of a query position and a rank position in session, and then summing that over the entire session, which means over all the queries and all the rank lists of those queries. Okay, 
Okay, so to actually develop that model, um, there was some mathematical work that had to be done. But that's very formal. Basically, we start by defining that discount function. That function tells you basically how likely the user is to look at that rank position in that, for that query. Um, we say, what's the probability that the user uh, examines that document at, um, at position M? Um, sorry. So that's our, that's our rank discount. And that's which we should call the session discount at this point. Then we have our alpha variable, which is the probability that the, uh, the user um, does not leave uh, the, the search, or does not leave the search at position M to N, so for M, for position M, given they examined the document at position M to N. We define beta to be the probability of continuing the search by reformulating, given those uh, same quantities. And then by multiplying out that uh, this equation I showed you here with these definitions plugged in, you get this complicated equation here. So this is our discount function. And on the next slide, we have a little breakdown of that. This discount function is saying we're going to take the product over all previous queries. That's this product here. We're going to take the sum over all of the retrieved documents for those queries. And then I'm going to take the product over all of the positions up to the position the user is currently looking at of that alpha and that beta. So I multiply the alpha and the beta together for a particular position uh, relative to another position the user is currently looking at relative to a query. And then multiply that by the, um, uh, the product of all the previously examined documents in the previous position. Like I said, not straightforward, not particularly intuitive, unless you really kind of think about it a lot. But uh, it's essentially a way of generalizing RVP from one query and one rank list to multiple queries in a session and multiple rank lists. Okay, so we have a few more. We're going to reparameterize this model. So this is actually still too complicated to compute. I mean, you can probably see that from the product. So, uh, um, so we'll reparameterize it make it a little easier, we'll make some simplified assumptions. We're actually going to assume that alpha and beta are constant across queries and rank lists. We don't need to assume that, but we're doing that in this case just to make it simpler. What, the, what that means in practice is that the user's abandonment about probability is not based on how many relevant documents they've seen up to that point, which is probably not realistic, but it simplifies the model for this, uh, for this development. So we're going to make alpha and beta constants and then we're going to reparameterize. So we're going to say alpha is, a, is actually equal to two other parameters multiplied together, B e and P. And beta is equal to 1 minus B times P. And uh, it's actually interesting that they turn out to work out. Uh, alpha and beta turn out to be related in this way with the B and P parameters. And you can think of those B and P parameters as being patience parameters, just like we have in RBP. So in RBP, the probability of the user going down that rank list is, uh, is defined with a parameter theta, which is called the patient's parameter. In our session RVP measure, we're going to have the probability of user going down the rank list. That's the patient's or continuing down the single list. And there's also going to be the, the patient's of the user to put in a new query and continue with the session um, in a vertical way with the horizontal way. So once you plug in those substitutions, you make that assumption of uh, constant alpha and beta, and you make those substitutions in terms of B and P, then the discount function reduces to this quantity here, which is a little bit nicer. So now you have P minus BP divided by 1 minus BP to the N minus first power times BP to the N minus first power. And, um, and again, this is saying that there's a discount according to the query number and a discount according to the number. And uh, you plug this into uh, you plug this into an RBP kind of equation, and then you have this where you're here, where you have a relevance judgment for a document in position to a uh, query queue. You have a rate-based discount, a query-based discount, and a normalization constant. 
And uh, one of our arguments for why this works is that if the session is one very long, so if n is equal to one, you plug in one here, and it reduces to exactly on VP. So if you just have one query, then this measure is the same as on VP. OK, so to, uh, sorry, to uh, validate this, we did some experiments with some actual user data. This is user data from the track session track from 2014. So I'll talk a little bit about how we collected this data first. Um, so for this track session track, we came up with some topics in the usual track kind of style. So that means we came up with a sort of information need. We came up with a description of what would be considered relevant to that information need. So basically kind of giving the user an idea of what they're looking for, what they're trying to do with the information they find. And then we gave those information needs to crowdsource users. We gave them a search engine to use. And we said, using this search engine, try to find as many relevant documents as you can for this information need. That you're given. And then we recorded all their queries, we recorded all their clicks uh, 12 times, so I had that. And um, that was crowdsourced. We obtained over 1,500 query sessions. And then to actually put together the data for the track session track, we threw out some of the sessions that, did, that didn't look so good. And uh, we released 1,257 query sessions um, in 2014. Each one of these sessions consists of the information need, the queries the user input, the documents they saw in the link lists, and whether they clicked or not, and how long they spent on them. So these are all sessions that are, they consist of one or more queries. So we want to use this data to validate our uh, measure or our model. So we had to make a few assumptions. We don't actually have examination. Behavior. We don't know whether the user saw any given document in the rank list or not, so we did have to make an assumption about that. So our assumption there is that if, a if the user clicked a document at rank N, like say rank 5, then they, that means they must have seen the documents at rank 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So it's a very simple assumption, simplified assumption, uh, but uh, it's kind of the best we can do in this data. So we use that to estimate true examination probabilities. And then we compare those to the um, examination probabilities that we would get from our model, from what our model says. And um, this figure here is showing for each query in the session. So the, um, the, the x-axis is query number. For each number, there's, uh, there's about 10 bars. Those 10 bars represent the rank positions for that query. And then the bar, the height of the bar represents the probability of the user examining that position. And uh, this is our model. So this is what the model says the user, um, the user examination probability should look like. When we compare a model to the actual examination probabilities that come from this assumption that the user saw everything that they clicked on and above, um, we looked at uh, total squared error. So that's, com that's, com that's uh, comparing the difference between our probability and the actual probability, and then squaring it, summing those all up, and uh, taking the average. <laughs> For our SRVP measure, we obtained a total square error of 0 0.0046. Uh, we compared that to another session-based measure, probably the, really the only other session-based evaluation measure out there in the literature, that's session DCG, which was um, published by Cal and Yarvin um, and his collaborators uh, back in 2011, I believe. And uh, the, the TSC for that measure was uh, an order of magnitude higher um, than it was for ours. And um, similarly for total absolute error and uh, callback and uh, panel divergence, we see much better results with, uh, with the SRVP model. Uh, and so, so you can see here in the diagram that the SDCG has um, probabilities that are much more focused on rank one uh, with other ranks having much lower probabilities of examination. Whereas our model gives a lot more weight to everything in the rank list. By the way, these parameters were set by training. We made a training set to fit these parameters. Um, so these are the best fit parameters to our training set, which was a subset of that track, session track data. And say the best DCG, these were trained on that set of that training data. Um, so this is just kind of saying that. Uh, this is basically how we fit PMB. Um, 
within a business a contract space, you're trying to minimize TSE, depending on PMB, so you search the space for the minimum for uh, TSE. And um, comparing to other evaluation measures, so we can, we can compare SRBP to RBP, for example, and we can locate the P parameter that gives us the lowest TSE, and that's 0.59 for, uh, for standard RBP. But we, then when you go up to uh, SRBP, you generalize to SRBP, then you get these two parameter values that are both um, higher than the RBP. Okay, so that was basically our evaluation. The evaluation was essentially that our model is doing a good job of predicting the user, um, the user examination probabilities. So we developed the model and uh, we developed the metric and we actually we evaluated the model in terms of those examination probabilities. But in terms of uh, evaluating the metric, I think there's still more work to do. Uh, when we started talking about this work, what we really wanted to do was look at sessions uh, where users try to complete some task, and they may have to complete some tasks along the way, and we don't necessarily know what queries they're going to input in order to complete those subtasks. So for future work, we want to generalize and not assume that we know every query in the session in advance, and um, consider that the user may input different queries at different points in the session. So that's it. Thank you. And the code is available. Scan the hashtag. It's also in the poster over there. And uh, I'll get a closer to answer any questions. Thanks.